Let's talk about copper. Copper is everywhere. You can find it in more places than you might imagine. Parts of your phone, pipes in your home, and pennies are all made out of copper. The copper cycle is a set of reactions that demonstrate how copper can transfer between different states of matter and still return to a solid. In this experiment, our objective is to observe these states. Let's begin. We started by pouring nitric acid on our 0.53 gram solid copper wire. The copper and nitric acid reacted to form copper to nitrate, nitrogen dioxide, and water. The copper dissolved in the acid, which turned green. The brown gas escaping the beaker is nitrogen dioxide. Water is added as well, which changes the liquid to a light blue color. In reaction two, sodium hydroxide was added to the copper to nitrate, which turned the blue liquid cloudy and slightly warm. The reactants, copper to nitrate and sodium hydroxide, produced copper to hydroxide and sodium nitrate. In reaction three, we used heat, a lot of heat, to turn our blue mixture into a black precipitate and clear liquid top. The copper to hydroxide separated into copper to oxide, the black precipitate, and water, the clear liquid. Next, the water is separated from the copper to oxide precipitate. The copper to oxide is combined with sulfuric acid forming copper to sulfate and water. In this reaction, the black solid is dissolved and the liquid turns blue. In reaction five, we mix in some aluminum. The copper to sulfate reacted with the aluminum to form aluminum, sulfate, and copper. In a second reaction, the aluminum is exposed to sulfuric acid, causing the formation of hydrogen and aluminum sulfate. The mixture is decanted until most of the water and copper have been separated. Any excess water is evaporated when the precipitate is heated from the steam underneath. In the end, we are left with our solid copper. That's the end of the experiment. So, what's the point? The point of this experiment is to show that in the copper cycle, copper can transition through many states and end with the same amount of solid copper it began with. Let's check out our results. Our copper sample had an initial mass of 0.53 grams. By the end, we only had 0.2 grams remaining. What happened? Well, when we did the math, we found that we had a 37.74% copper yield. So the rest of the copper went somewhere else. One potential source of error is lost copper during decantation. A second is that if the aluminum was not stirred long enough, not all copper precipitate may have formed. In both instances, there would be less solid copper remaining at the end of the experiment. Well, that's our video for today. Thanks for watching.